we do is really important. And sometimes people don't understand, they don't appreciate it. And so when someone tells me that they, we do better when we work together, um, it really kind of gets me here, and because that's all what we're about. And so if, um, anyway, I, I will, I typically can't go on and on. I'm a person of relatively few words, so I will, I will wrap it up. But I would just say he understands the role of the chamber and that we benefit when we work together. Thank you for the leadership you have provided to the chamber, to the region, and to the state. And this is Jim Zabo, and he's with Vermont Country Store, and it's for <laughs> Member of the Year. Come on up, Jim. So I guess, thank you very much. So I'm Jim Zabo, the Director of Retail at the Vermont Country Store. I've been with the Vermont Country Store for 15 years. I am going to be retiring. So Sheena Smith is here with me, so she's gonna be taking over my position here. So I feel it's in great hands, because Sheena's actually been with the Vermont Country Store longer than I have. She's been with the Country Store for 20 years. So it has been a privilege to serve on the chamber. I was here back probably, I want to say, 2015 when Margie was here. I worked with Berta McGinnis down in Manchester. and was on the Manchester Chamber. I am still on the board at Vermont Attractions and have been there for probably 10 or 12 years as well. And Weston was probably the last little town that was a holdout that had their own little um, chamber. So I know a lot of other towns had theirs. We had ours, but Obviously, with limited resources and folks having not enough time, we had to kind of fold in, so that's why we stopped doing our brochure and stopped having our membership, but I oversaw that for probably 15 years while I was there. So it was just a very distinct pleasure, and again, like uh, Carol said, we are stronger together. I think all of us have attractions, businesses. We want the customers out there for a portion of the time, and we want to spread the wealth, and tell people about the other great places in the state to be able to travel to. So I think Vermont is definitely unique, having gone to so many bus shows, ABA and MBA and with the Big E, everyone who comes through says, oh my God, I love Vermont, I love Vermont. You don't get that about other states, so sorry for folks that are from New Jersey or Virginia or other places, but they don't really have that love of wanting to come here. So Vermont is truly special, and it's the people that are here that make the difference. So it's all of you guys as well. So I just want to say thank you, and I am retiring to Hawaii, so I will say aloha to all of you. So thank you very much.
I guess 2020, so I guess they've been here a little while. Um, <laughs> yes, thank you. This is really exciting. Um, I hope that you all are able to make it to our Best of Vermont Festival this year. The planning has gone tremendously. We have taken all of the things that we've learned from last year um, and have applied them, so I expect it to be even greater and better than last year, which was fabulous. Um, if you're ever in the market for heading to Cuttingsville, come say hi to me. I'm right on 103. Um, and this is, oh my god, <laughs> I'm shocked. Um, so thank you. You love me. You really, really love me. I do. I do. <laughs> one of you to please stand up. I can put this down because I'm on the tiptoes. Okay. Um, for me as president, <laughs> I'm here. Uh, Vice President Tom Gianola. Okay, Tom. Treasurer Scott Duffy. Secretary Art R uh, Randolph. <laughs> And these are our returning directors, Nicole Carlson, she's not here, Stephen Plunkard, is Stephen here? No. Sarah Sheehan. He's here. Garrison Smith, right over there. there. Alyssa Stewart, we know Alyssa. And Holger Stoltz, right there. So now we have some new board members. Uh, we have Anna Tumbler from Okima. Uh, this is her first chamber meeting and I just met her. She sounds really cool. Uh, Amy Messina, she's over there. She's with Town and Country Realty. And Sheena Smith from the Vermont Country Store. I think we all just met her. And Kerry Weidman, right over there. I didn't realize that. <laughs> okay, thank you, Weidman Law, for sponsoring this meeting. I did not know that. <laughs> That's great, thank you so much. Uh, so we need to approve this board, uh, the slate of officers, and Tom is giving us a second. I'll make the first. Um, <laughs> Art, Art and Alyssa. And, Right. Right. So, uh, any discussion about these members? Does anyone want to say anything? Uh, would it? Would we have um, a vote? Does everyone agree that this is a good place? And then just, just looking around the room at the at some of the new hands for people that are going to be on the board. I like the age ranges here. Very good. Yeah. We love the age ranges. We love having new people. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, hearing no other discussion, uh, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? These are your new uh, board members for the Okima Valley Chamber in the 65th year. My name is Chris Winters. I am your Deputy Secretary of State. I've been in the Secretary of State's office for 25 years now. 
It was my second job out of law school. Uh, I was offered the job when I had a child on the way, and I had hung a shingle in Barrie, Vermont, trying to do a little bit of real estate law. And um, I liked the job with a steady paycheck and good benefits at that time. It made a lot of sense to me. So I decided to work for the state and uh, never imagined that I would. And I've never looked back, actually. I love what I do at the Secretary of State's office. It's a really diverse office that affects all of your lives every single day. And so I'm hoping I can let you know a little bit more about what the Secretary of State's office does tonight, how that impacts you, how you can take advantage of some of the things that we do at the Secretary of State's office. And I'm happy to answer some questions afterward if you have them. So in 25 years that I've been there, I started as a staff attorney in the Office of Professional Regulation. There's four major divisions of the Secretary of State's office. It's a small but mighty agency, as we like to say. Those four divisions cover a lot of territory. The Office of Professional Regulation regulates 50 professions and 80,000 licensees. So everything from accountants to real estate brokers to tattooists to funeral directors and on and on. Pharmacy is a big one that we're uh, looking at today to help protect the public. You might have heard of a recent case that we filed against Walgreens uh, for putting patients in, in danger uh, across the state of Vermont. That's us. That's uh, the Secretary of State's office. We have a whole law enforcement unit, an investigative unit, and a whole mini court system built right into the Secretary of State's office to protect the public. We make sure licensees are qualified, like your dentist has the training that he or she should have. And then we make sure that if they uh, put you in danger somehow, commit unprofessional conduct, uh, walk away with that trust fund that you gave to the funeral director, we investigate and we prosecute that and we take away the licenses and, and help protect the public in that way. So that's just one division of our office, the Office of Professional Regulation. As business owners, hopefully you're, you're pretty familiar with our business registration division, also known as our corporations division. And what we've tried to do is make it as easy as possible for businesses to register in the state of Vermont so they can get to the work of maintaining and growing and building their businesses and not have to worry about a lot of paperwork. We have what's called our Vermont Business Portal. It lets you go in through our virtual front door and go to the Department of Labor and go to the Department of Taxes and file your business all in one, one stop. Um, and we're actually working to expand that business portal to include other things that you might need from state government to make it a true one-stop shop. That's something we're working on right now to rebuild the foundation of the business portal, bring in the agency of commerce and community development to connect you as a new business, as an existing business with resources that might be available to you. And then we're gonna start bringing in other agencies, like maybe you need something from the Department of Liquor and Lottery. Maybe you need something from the agent, uh, Agency of Agriculture Maybe you need an a &R permit. We'd love to eventually, that's the long-term vision, is to pull that all into one place to make it really easy for business to interact with government because I know it's not always easy. That's two divisions. The third division is our State Archives and Records Administration. So you may, may know this, you may not, that we have a warehouse in Middlesex, a giant steel building with stacks that are about 50 feet high, two forklifts, hundreds of thousands of cubic feet of state records. We also have a climate-controlled archives where we keep our most precious documents, including copies of Vermont's Constitution, um, and 15 staff members there who handle things like vital records, so marriage certificates, death certificates. Uh, a lot of the genealogy research goes on in our research room there, and there's some really valuable Vermont history in our state archives building in Middlesex. And that records management piece of it, it's just, it sounds kind of mundane, but it's all the records of state agencies that we help them maintain. That's the record of what your government is doing for you. And those are your records. They're public records and they belong to you. So we need to manage them properly, especially when something goes wrong. We can go back and look at what happened. We can pull those records. We can hold government accountable and we can make government responsible. Um, and that's a, a mantra that we've had in the Secretary of State's office that not another, a lot of other state agencies talk about. And then the fourth division of our office is the one that you're probably most familiar with, and that's our elections division. It's the smallest elections division in the country. We just have five people running our elections in Vermont, overseeing the locally administered elections that happen among all the town clerks across the state. 
Uh, but our elections division helps train those clerks, and all of the results and the checklists report up to our main system. Um, so we oversee Vermont's elections to make sure that they're secure, that they're accurate, that they're fair, um, and that everyone can trust the results of their elections and we make sure everyone's vote counts. And in 2020, the thing that I'm most proud of in my career as in, and in my years as Deputy Secretary of State was in March of 2020, we had to send everybody home. We had to flip the switch from everybody being in the office providing all of these services to being remote and providing these services. Luckily, we have a lot of online systems, so business registration didn't stop, professional licensing didn't stop, and we knew we had to pivot for an election. We had a, a 2020 election coming up, a presidential primary that was really contested. We knew we would have record turnout, and we didn't want people to have to choose between their health and their right to vote. And if you can remember back to March of 2020, we didn't really know much about COVID-19, about how it was spread. We were all really in fear for how that might play out over the next several months. And we knew that we needed to go to a vote by mail system for the November election so that no Vermonter would have to make that choice between their health and their right to vote. We were seeing it play out in places like Wisconsin where people were going to the polls with homemade PPE, you know, garbage bags and things over their heads. And it was just really a disaster. A lot of people didn't vote in that Wisconsin primary because they were afraid for their health. And we didn't want that to happen in Vermont. Uh, so we switched to a vote by mail system. It worked incredibly well. We had record voter turnout in the middle of a pandemic. And that's one of the things I'm most proud of in my career as, as a Deputy Secretary of State. Vermonters embraced vote by mail so much that we went back to the legislature. And now in November general elections, you'll receive that ballot in the mail automatically. And a lot of people appreciate the convenience of that that other states don't have. And this is just a reminder, there's a primary election in two weeks, two weeks from yesterday. Uh, you won't automatically get mailed the ballot for that. Primary elections, you still have to request one if you vote absentee. Or you can, of course, vote in person on Election Day, Tuesday, August 9th. Um, one of the other things that I should talk about, because Amy mentioned it, and because it's a really important program that we have, is the Safe at Home program. It's an address confidentiality program that we have in the Secretary of State's office to help protect victims of violence, domestic abuse, stalking from their abusers. They're allowed to use our address as a substitute address so that they don't have to put their address in the public record. So for a, a land record, for example, they can use our address for voting. They can use our address so that their abusers can't track them down through public records. We have 200 people in that program at any one time in the Secretary of State's office, and we know that it has saved lives. So that's one of the many things that we do at the Secretary of State's office. Um, we also help municipalities with open meetings and public records. It's really important that you all be able to access your local government, that you know your rights when it comes to attending open meetings, participating in open meetings, and being able to comment, and that the work of those public bodies is done in the open and is accountable. The same goes for public records. Like I said, those are your records, and they can only be held back for a really good reason that's laid out in the law. Otherwise, they should provide those to you. So we advocate for the public for open and transparent government. Because that's how I've been doing my job for the last 25 years there, is as though 600,000 plus Vermonters are looking over my shoulder when I do it. So what we're trying to do in the Secretary of State's office, and not every agency acts this way, but what we're trying to do is reduce barriers as much as we can while still doing the mission that the, that the legislature has told us to do. So for voting, we're protecting election integrity, but we're still making it as easy as possible to vote. For business registration, we have to get those regist that registration information, but let's reduce all the hurdles that we possibly can for businesses coming to register in our office. For professional regulation, there's a public protection mission so we make sure people have the qualifications, but just that, don't go an inch beyond that and make it as easy as possible for people to enter professions. We've made it simpler for you to come from other states with a professional license and come to Vermont. In many states, 
they make you jump through a whole bunch of hoops before you can become a, a licensee in another state. In Vermont, we've made it really simple because it's a workforce development issue, it's an economic development issue, uh, so we have a responsibility to make that just as simple as possible. Um, I'm really proud of the work that we do in the Secretary of State's office. Hopefully this has given you a little bit of understanding of, of the many things that we do, how the Secretary of State's office impacts your lives every single day. And I'm going to hang around after, and if you have a specific question about the Secretary of State's office, I'd encourage you to come up and ask me, or you can always just call the office. We have a real culture of customer service there. Hopefully if you've had interactions with us and you've tried to get someone uh, uh, on the phone, you've gotten a call or you've gotten a call back right away. Our, our people there are eager to help. Uh, we're problem solvers. We're that catch-all in state government where they don't, if they don't know where to put something, it tends to end up in the Secretary of State's office. Um, so there's a lot of things in there that we do that, that can affect your lives, your businesses, and our goal is just to make things safer, easier, and better for Vermonters. So thanks for the opportunity to talk to you tonight. Congratulations to the Okemo Chamber for 65 years. I'm really happy to be in this part of the state. Um, I think more, more of our public officials ought to get out there and visit different parts of the state and get connected with the people on the ground and understand what their issues are. I'm looking forward to hearing from you uh, after this and uh, answering any questions that you might have. So thanks a lot for having me. I really appreciate it. In Vermont, we have consumer protection laws and debt collection practices laws, just like they do everywhere. But in Vermont, they protect not just individuals, but businesses. So if you find yourself needing consumer help, you can call the, the uh, Attorney General's office and the laws will protect you, which is very cool. In Vermont, most businesses are small businesses, and most small businesses have between one and three employees. So we're really small, and we're used to this, right? We're living it when, when, we, when we go to our communities and we know how small the businesses are. So they might not have deep legal departments or accounting departments, but you can call the Attorney General's office and talk to the small business advocate for help. Um, I wanna talk about this business, though, about small businesses being protected. One time, this is my favorite when I was helping small businesses, I got to work and someone I worked with said, Charity, uh, there is an inn and a debt collector in Texas is trying to collect a $600 debt from them and they sent this email and they hand me the email and the email is from the debt collector to the inn and it says, hi inn, I can harass you because you're a business and the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act doesn't apply to you and I just cackled and called them and said, hi, this is Charity Clark from the Attorney General's office. You're breaking the law because in Vermont, businesses are protected by the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act. So it is very gratifying to know that we can help businesses here in Vermont using our laws that the legislature passed. And, um, and I was lucky enough to be in the position of amplifying that message to let people know that those uh, laws do protect them when they're businesses. I also worked in the legislature on some bills to help small businesses, and it's really wonderful to have that experience because the great ideas come from small businesses. They call the Attorney General's office, talk about a problem they're having, and when we get enough complaints and tips, we say, hey, we need to do something about this to help Vermont small businesses, which of course are the backbone of the economy, make our downtowns beautiful, um, so that is my quick pitch to you about small businesses in Vermont and how the laws protect them. I noticed when I arrived you were enjoying pizza and beer, and I certainly don't want to stand in the way of that, but I'm also happy to answer questions or I'll be mingling and I can chat with you if you have any questions about the Attorney General's office, my background, my campaign, or small businesses, of course, I'm available. Thank you for listening. It's wonderful to be home in Ludlow, and it's really wonderful to see you all. Thanks so much. Yay. Yes, Carol. Can you just talk about the role of the Attorney General? Yes, that's a great question. I skipped over that foundation. The Attorney General is the lawyer to the state. Just like your business or your family has a lawyer, we're the lawyer to the state. There's 150 people working at the Attorney General's office across seven divisions. 
and it really runs the gamut. We've got the Environmental Division, the Public Protection Division, the Criminal Division, the Human Services Division, and so on. 90 of the people who work there are lawyers, which make the Attorney General's office the largest law firm in the state, law firm in the state. Um, most of those lawyers are in Montpelier, but some of them are actually down here in Southern Vermont. There's a few stationed around, and they do really wonderful and important work. The Attorney General, here's a fun fact, um, Vermont didn't have an Attorney General for like 100 years. If something came up, they just hired a guy. But since the 1900s or so, 1900 or so, we've had an Attorney General, and they've gotten bigger over the years. And here's another fun fact. The, the, and I actually kind of want to ask, I want to I wanna get some guesses. There was a moment in the mid-1900s, 1950s, 1960s, where the Attorney General's office got really big. It used to be just like one man and a secretary, and then it got really big. What happened in the 50s that might have made the Attorney General's office have to do a lot of legal work for the state? Anyone care to guess? The interstate highway system. All of the like land, you know, public domain, like they needed lawyers to do that work. So now it's gotten a lot bigger over the years. Um, another fun fact is we have never elected a woman Attorney General in Vermont. It's the last statewide office that has never um, had a woman elected to it. So well, I. Well, it's about time. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so I am very proud to be on the ballot um, for the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party has never nominated a woman to be Attorney General. The Republican Party has, but the Democratic Party has not. So I'm very proud to already have made history by appearing on the ballot. Um, so thank you for that, hurrah. We have this conference room at the Attorney General's office that has portraits of all of the old attorneys general hanging. And it's very jarring because it's all men, and it's 26 of them. And so when you walk in, I've walked in for a regular meeting with someone and had them say, whoa, because it is, it is really jarring. So I hope that um, we put an end to that trend and elect a woman this, uh, this year. Other questions? When is the election? The primary is on August 9th. The general election is on November 8th. But I, I will I will note as another fun fact, um, the man running for the Republicans uh, for Attorney General is also running for Secretary of State, Auditor of Accounts, and Treasurer, and he's not a lawyer. So the August 9th primary um, between myself and a competitor um, is really the, the election, because I, th I don't think our, our Republican friend is going to have an easy time of it, not being a lawyer. So. Thank you for that, because I think the best one is right over there, and that is Chris Winter's Secretary of State. Mm -hmm. All right. There's Chris, yes, Secretary of State's office. Cool. Well, thanks for having me, you guys. It was great to be here, and I'll be mingling around. Thank you.